The letter of Jude is 25 verses in length and has a rather strong tone and refers to either people or events in the Old Testament throughout its text. It can be broken up into five major parts, the first of which is the greeting, and then there are sections on the reason for writing, warnings concerning those who have snuck in, encouragement for the beloved, and then the closing. From the first verse we learn that Jude is the author and that he is addressing his letter to those who have been sanctified in God the Father and have been kept in Jesus Christ. In verse 2, he refers to mercy, peace, and love. In verse 3, we learn the reason for his writing. There was a necessity for him to encourage them to earnestly fight for the faith which was given once for all to the holy ones. The reason for this is because there are some who had snuck in, who had transferred the grace of God into unbridled lust, and who were denying the only Master, God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. In verses 5 through 7, Jude reminds his readers of events in the Old Testament. He speaks of those who had been saved out of the land of Egypt, but then were destroyed because of their lack of belief. How messengers did not keep their own principality, but are now kept to the judgment of the great day in eternal bonds under blackness. And finally, he refers to Sodom and Gomorrah, and the individuals there who had indulged in fornication and had gone after different flesh who are laid before as an example, being held under the sentence of everlasting fire. These events that are spoken about are used to describe those who are referred to in verse 4. For they have defiled the flesh, they have rejected lordship, and they are blaspheming the heavenly glories. This is in contrast to what Michael the archangel does in verse 9. There you can read of him arguing with the devil and reasoning concerning the body of Moses. And even though Michael the archangel is arguing with the devil, he does not bring a judging of blasphemy against him, but rather says, The Lord rebuke you. In contrast to this, those who have snuck in are blaspheming many things that they do not know. And they know things naturally, like unreasoning creatures that are corrupt in the different things that they are doing. In verses 11 and following, Jude speaks of woes concerning these who have snuck in. He refers to Cain and Balaam and Korah. In verses 12 and 13, Jude refers to things that you could see in nature, things such as waterless clouds, unfruitful autumn trees, wild waves of the sea foaming forth their own shames, misleading stars. In verses 14 and 15, Jude provides a prophecy of Enoch. It says, Behold, the Lord came in among tens of thousands of his holy ones to make a judgment against all and to convict all the ungodly of them concerning all their works of ungodliness, which they did in ungodly ways and concerning all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This warning against those who have stuck in concludes in verse 16 where he describes them as murmurers, complainers, conducting themselves according to their own lust, and so on. In verses 17 through 23, Jude encourages his readers. He describes them as beloved, and he reminds them that the apostle had once spoken of things that would come in the last time, that there would be mockers conducting themselves according to their own lust of ungodlinesses. These who do such things are ones who are causing splits who are physical, who do not have the Spirit. But for the beloved, he tells them to keep building themselves up in their most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. In verse 21 it reads, Keep yourselves in God's love, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for everlasting life. In verses 22 and 23 he provides instruction on how they are to show mercy to some how they are to save them in fear, seizing them out of the fire, hating even the tunic which has been stained from the flesh. Verses 24 and 25 make up the closing to the letter. He describes God and how he would guard them from falling, and how he would desire them to stand in the sight of his glory, unblemished in gladness. And then he gives praise to him, speaking of the only wise God, our Savior, and he describes him as having glory and majesty, dominion and authority, both now and forever. The letter ends with the word, Amen.